I'm so tired of the Twitter mentality that if some person says it or if it's a rumor or whatever, it's ever, it's automatically fact. You know, it's automatically fact without doing any research. It is just fact. Hey, let's all light our pitchforks and let's burn the mother down because it is a fact, you know? And I'm like, what the? F when did this start? You know, it's been around for a while, but I, it just literally makes me sick to my stomach. And anybody that I talk about on the channel or that I interview, it's not necessarily, it doesn't come from a place like, hey, I'm pro this person. It comes from a place that I am pro freedom of speech and I am pro your side of the story. You know what I'm saying? I would interview Damascus tomorrow if he wanted to, you know? Couldn't look away from a train wreck. You can blame it on the tank or the disrespect. Free play, bad button check. Button check. Here we are, ladies and gents. As promised, we have Gutex back once again. The last time we interviewed this man, man, I want to say it was about two years ago. Like something like that. I think the quarantine was still going on or it was, it was like right before it was something like that it was a hot minute ago for yeah. sure <laughs> yeah definitely. Uh, but yeah yeah thanks for thanks for having me back no problem no problem you know we released that last video uh you know with with kind of some things that were going on at evo um everybody by now watching this is probably pretty familiar with what's going on so therefore we wanted to get your side of things you know i noticed um uh, when it initially happened uh, Damascus, for those of you that don't know, I'll put his profile on the screen. What I'm pretty sure y'all are familiar with him. He's, I believe he's from France, if I'm not mistaken, like commentator and whatnot. He does like FGC and I think Rocket League 2 or something like that. Uh, pretty well known. But he made these accusations, very vocal over the weekend, um, you know, saying that you had asked him to place to add. You have like, I guess like a new ebook or something like that, helping people train and whatnot. Um, and it was free to the community. And he was saying that you asked him to post it. He also says he went, he told you no a few times, but somehow it still made it on the air. So he was really pissed off. I guess he didn't see it till the next day when others brought it to his attention. So he was like, this is bullshit. And then I noticed the thread underneath, everybody was basically, you know, jumping on that bag bandwagon saying, yeah, uh, Gutex is fucked up for that. He shouldn't have did that. And then when we made the video, I went and said, well, I would like to get Gutex's side of the story first because there's always two sides to the story because I saw the you posted saying, sorry, I don't pay attention to fake news. Um, I will make a response in about a day or two. Um, and then lo and behold, I got a message from you saying, hey, uh, do you want the scoop? And I said, hell, give me a double scoop of that motherfucker because I, <laughs> I definitely yeah. will take the scoop. Uh, because I'm always like, you know, we've done multiple in, uh, interviews on this show, all perspectives, all across the world. And I'm always willing to get perspectives and point of views. And that's what I think the FGC is missing nowadays, especially with the cancel culture and Twitter and all that people. It's almost like they refuse to hear the other side of the story or to get all the facts before they make a judgment. And I just don't, I never, uh, you know, appreciated that, that method, you know? So anyway, thank you for joining us. And, um, yeah, I mean, kind of picking it up from there. Uh, I believe you're, you were, obviously you were there at Evo. Yeah. And, um, you were saying, I think this was the first year, because usually Gutex is the one that does the salty sweets and all these things, right? And you're hosting all these things. Now, with the event going on um, that Damascus was a part of, were you also a part of that in any way? Like, were you sponsoring it or anything like that? Or were you just kind of hanging out? So, I, um, you know, like, this is, this is Evo number... Uh... I don't know, 18 or something like that. You know, it's been it's been many Evos. Yeah. And for the first time in a long time, uh, I, I really didn't have any major responsibilities, right? Gotcha. Like, uh, I wasn't I wasn't competing, wasn't doing any events, wasn't uh, hosting anything. Um, but what I have been doing is writing a new book about training mode. Okay. And the book is, uh, you know, it's geared for uh, beginner and intermediate players, which is the vast majority of players, you know. Um, I've been working on it for, you know, a while. And, you know, of course, Evo is the biggest fighting game weekend of the year. So I, uh, I wanted to 
have some kind of release or promotion during Evo weekend, um, because even though it's not uh, it's not totally done, it's you know it's almost there. It's like eighty percent done. It's like I still felt like it was important to at least try to uh, you know try to promote it or try you know put out what I had. And yep. so since it's not since you know it's not done. It's still like a, it's like 120 something pages, right? Like, oh, wow, so wow. It, you know, it's a like there's still plenty in there, right? So somebody could uh, download it for free, go through it, and you know, probably by the time they actually went through everything or got to the end, I would probably yeah. be able to have you know had the you know the finished product out. But since it wasn't done, I figured, well why don't I just put it out for free? It's Evo weekend. And then I can, you know, get some feedback. I can get, you know, start to get the word out. And, uh, so then I thought, okay, well, what I need to do is find a stream or streams that I can sponsor okay. financially to help promote the book. Okay. And, um, uh, so Arturo hit me up, um, last weekend because um uh, one of our friends told him that i bought one of these uh, 390 hertz monitors right because uh you know for those that haven't been um paying too close attention uh the pc master race revolution has begun yep. in the fgc and uh i taught uh, arturo basically walked me through how to set it up last weekend and so i've been you know, really excited to play again. And, you know, that's kind of how it started because, you know, I hadn't talked to him in a while and, you know, he told me what was uh, going on with the, uh, well, it started as a five on five. Originally it was, uh, you know, North America, or I, I guess technically originally it was, it was USA versus EU ver versus Europe 5v5. Um, and it was going to take place at one of the uh, salty suites at Evo. Okay. And, you know, then it evolved into, you know, a 9v9 and, and whatever. So I uh, I pick him up from the airport on Wednesday and then, you know, we hang out and uh, take him over to the, uh, take him over to the Mandalay Bay on Thursday afternoon, um, you know, because he's basically the guy partnering with uh, Damascus's group, uh, Reversal GG, as well as uh, Defend the North, uh, which is a, a New York tournament, as well as MSI, who's providing all the the hardware. So, you know, I've, to me, it's like, okay, well, I was looking for an event to sponsor anyways, might as well just make it this one because, you know, so I can kill multiple birds with one stone, right? Um, you know, it's our, you know, Arturo's running the stream. I've known Damascus for years. Uh, I've, you know, I've, uh, I'm an enthusiast of, uh, you know, low latency <laughs> fighting games, you know, so it seemed like a great opportunity to, uh, sponsor the stream and promote the book at the same time. And so I, so I, I, uh, ask Arturo, you know, I, t you know, I tell him, Hey, like I want to sponsor the stream. Like, what's the deal? And he's like, Oh yeah, I just talked to Damascus tomorrow. So Thursday we go over there and, you know, we're in one of the suites and, you know, people are setting up, uh, he's there, you know, I hadn't seen him. Um, maybe I probably, I'm sure I'd seen him like here and there over the years, but probably the last time I hung out with him was, uh, I don't know, like 2016 ish, 27, like 2016 ish in, in France at Cannes Winter Clash. Um, you know, so we're, you know, I mean, we're not like BFFs or anything, but like certainly not strangers hung out with this dude, you know, over there. Right. And okay. so I talked to him and I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I want to I want to see about sponsoring the event because I, you know, I have a, a an ad I want to run. So he asked me, what are you wanting to promote? I'm like, oh, yeah. So I wrote a book on training mode. You know, it's for new players, blah, blah, blah. I want to, um, you know, it's not done, but I want to give it away for free because it's not done. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to let the opportunity go by. Yep. And so uh, he asked me, like, how much do you want to sponsor for? So uh, I'm like, I don't know, like 250, you know, like I'm just throwing a number out there, right? And he says, well, how about 300? 100 to the Macherino for the players and 200 to us. 
I said, okay, sure, no problem. You know, like I, to me, it's like totally reasonable on both sides, you know? And, um, you know, I, I, I told him like, you know, it's not like, it's not totally done. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be working on it tomorrow. So after we had agreed on the price, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, if you, if we agree on a price, in my mind, we have a deal because like we talk about it and then, you know, come to an agreement. So the following day, it was, it's uh, Friday and I'm basically like uh, scrambling to finish up everything, right? I'm building a landing page, put together, the, uh, put together the, the PDF, the graphic and everything, you know, like it's kind of funny too, because we even had this conversation about how we're both like, lagging it and it's you know a lot you know so much of fgc is last minute stuff you know yeah. uh it's just par for the course for fgc stuff you know um so it's it's you know it's like getting dark you know it's like in the evening i'm like all right i gotta like get over there uh to the hotel and you know figure out where to send the money and get uh get art who was streaming the event, uh, I get him the, uh, the asset, the graphic. So I go over there and, um, uh, I messaged Damascus on Twitter. I'm like, Hey, like, let me know where to send the money, you know, because, you know, that's what, because as far as I'm concerned, we, we agreed on the deal on a, on a price yesterday, you right. know, the day before. So I don't hear back from him, but it's like, I don't really think too much of it because I know he's on commentary. I know he's like, he's the one that's like busy, right? Like I'm the one with no responsibilities, right? right. Like he's, he's gotta be on commentary for the official stream. He's running this event. He's got, um, you know, his own, I mean, you know, so he, he, you know, he's doing double duty. So it's like, okay, right. like I don't hear back, but I don't, you know, it's like not a big deal to me because I'm just like, okay, well, like I, it, you know, it's it's not surprising to me that somebody doesn't like somebody who's going to be like on camera and is running events. Like, it's not a surprise that like they didn't get back to me real quick. You know, no big right. deal. So uh, I don't hear back from him, but because we had agreed on the the price the day before, um, you know, I I'm there with Arturo. I mean, I even helped set up monitors in the suite like before the before it started. You know. Um, and so I asked Arturo, hey, like, what's the best way to get it to you? Um, because in my mind, because we had agreed on the 300 bucks the day before, like, I'm just going to send Art the asset, which yeah. was a very simple graphic that, you you know, you had on the uh, on your show last okay. time. It just says, like, free book, gutex.com, you know, like, it's, it, you know, it's not a um, it's not a cannabis product. It's not a vape product. It's not, um, you know, it's not porn. It's just a book, yep. you know, like it's not even, I mean, it's not even like a, it's not even for sale, you know? Uh, so I send art, the, the graphic before, you know, when he's getting set up and that's it. Yeah. Uh, so then the event starts, actually, uh, they were missing some cables. I, I ran back over here to grab uh, some cables that IDOM ended up using in the first match. Um, and the event just went on, right? Yeah. Uh, once it had started, then I see Damascus there. And I'm like, hey, bro, like, let me know where to send the money, you know, because, like, you know, he's, you know, we're there in person. Yeah. And he, and this is where, uh, you know, once I saw his tweets, it, it's uh, where things really didn't start to make any sense because, um, when in, in his tweet, he's saying that he told me no multiple times. Right. But that was not our conversation on Thursday. Or sorry, excuse me, on Friday that night. Um, he was concerned because Arturo didn't have their assets loaded up in the stream. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, I mean, you know, I've run stream, you know, I've, I've done, I've done every part of this before right, like right. it's not my first rodeo with any of this so damascus is freaking out because his assets aren't aren't you know being shown and you know they're like trying to promote 
uh, an event in, in France, right? So I'm like, oh man, like I better tell uh, Andy, City of Brass, uh, who, who runs Defend the North, like, you know, right. maybe, maybe he has some input too, because basically the three of us, like me, Damascus, and uh, Andy, City of Brass, all have, you know, assets that need to be shown on stream. Uh, so, you know, the three of us chat for a moment and basically like Damascus is like resigned to the fact that like his ads, like his ad isn't going to be shown. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, at this point the event is already, you know, the match has already been going for a while, right? Like nobody's really in a position to do anything aside from just let it play out the way that it does. Yeah. And so after it's done, uh, Art comes up to me and he's like, oh yeah, like I, I played your ad twice. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> like, sweet, yeah. you know? And in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh man, like I don't know how this is gonna go, right? Because like, number one, I'm not, you know, like I'm, I'm just there I only saw like half of it, right? Like I'm not watching on stream, right? So I'm not paying super close attention, but it's like, you know, number one, I'm like, oh, I don't know if Damascus's ads are gonna be run. And number two, I haven't sent the money yet because I don't, you know, like, I don't know where to send it. Like ask, you know, whatever, like I'm good for it. Dude, it's like 300 bucks. It's not like, you know, we're <laughs> like, there's no approvals, you know, like it's just money out of my pocket. It's not a big deal, right? Right, right. And, uh yeah that was that so the event ends and uh you know i just i don't know i didn't i didn't see him the rest of the night and i'm just there and you know we're hanging out we're drinking and i'm going like uh you know i i'm i'm just hanging out with people all night and i wake up uh saturday really late like in the afternoon like three four o'clock you know because it's like i'm not the one that's got shit to do <laughs> like i'm just up all night drinking and hanging out with people you know right so then <laughs> i i look at twitter and i see this huge blow up and i'm like huh well this is weird because as far as i'm concerned like we have a deal like we had a deal right so then i go into my dms because what i and i'll you know whatever i'll send you the dms or I'll, you know i'll show you whatever like it's um it's clear as day like i'm asking where to send the money right because i'm like oh wow it sucks that this dude would like blow me up publicly when we could have just like talked about it and worked it out obviously there's some miscommunication yeah. and then i see it in my dms like he doesn't respond to the you know me asking where to send the money He's just like pissed at 10:30 yeah. in the morning, right? So he mess he DMs me at 10:30 in the morning and then blows me up like an hour and a half later before noon on Twitter publicly. It's like wh like why would you I mean if you really were like trying to, you know, whatever resolve things like adults, like why would you try to like take everything publicly, right? Right. Um because to me, you know, if you have a problem with somebody, like you should just try to resolve it with them directly. And, you know, I guess to an extent he did, right? Like he messaged, he DM me first, right? And then waited an hour and a half. And then I guess I didn't respond fast enough because I'm passed out because I'm not the one with shit to do <laughs> in the morning. Right. And then he decides to blow me up publicly. And I'm like, dude, uh why would you do that right so then of yeah. course then then we get into it over dms so i mean i have all those too and it's like he never when all was said and done like what it came down to is him saying like oh well you he, he basically is blaming me for an ad that his streamer ran on stream that he didn't approve because he didn't see the graphic before it ran on stream yeah and it's like okay i mean i guess i could see why you would be upset but i don't i also don't see why i'm somehow sneaky or like how i did something you know like i'm the one you know standing in back of arturo you know with a gun to his head saying run my ad twice like you know like i i just i don't know that's just not what happened yeah yeah so to me it's like 
a clear miscommunication, um, but also completely blown out of proportion, especially considering, you know, I was the one trying to give him the money. Yeah. Do you, um, do you think it could be, this is just me spitballing right here because I'm not on the inside like you are, but in light of recent events, you know, I would say, uh, I, I think I made the comment too on the previous video, I can't, I can't remember, but I said, I think around the time, <clears throat> excuse me, of the quarantine and whatnot, you started becoming very like opinionated politically and like with the vaccine and all these things. And you start, you got a lot of blowback on social media for that. You know what I'm saying? To the point where there was like notable names in the community talking about you should block Gutex or we're not rolling with Gutex no more, stuff like that, right? Um, to lead up to now, like fast forward to now, it seems like when I, like, cause I had no idea any of this, what you're telling me. I, I had no idea what you were gonna say, you know, before we got on here. Uh, but now listening to your side of the story, do you think it could have been one of those things to where I noticed in Damascus tweet, he said, I didn't even see it until the next morning when everybody started blowing me up. And I could only imagine the reason why they were blowing him up is because they themselves probably have a quote unquote problem with Gutex, like they don't like your point of views or whatever, right? So because they see an ad that says Gutex and they probably look at you negative in a negative light, to me, that's the only reason why they would blow him up. Because otherwise, why? The ad itself, like you said, wasn't porn, wasn't anything negative, wasn't vape, wasn't weed, wasn't anything like that. It was a free book for the community. So obviously, that can't be it. It has to be the author to me, right? So these people that uh, Damascus talks about blew him up, then blew him up saying Gutex, 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 Gutex. And then apparently he DMs you, you don't answer within an hour or so. And then he flames you on Twitter. But on Twitter, it almost comes across as, hey, I'm not down with Gutex. You know what I'm saying? That's what it almost comes down with. Like, I guess be do you think the reason why he did it that way is because so many people reacted that way, so he kind of followed suit? Do you think it could be one of those things? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's what makes the most, I mean, that's what makes the most sense. I'm sure, um, I mean, I highly doubt we'll ever, uh, you know, get any sort of real confirmation about that. But, you know, you're not the first, you know, I've, you know, I've talked to, you know, different people about it since, you know, since it happened, because, you know, yeah. um, it bothers me. I mean, dude, you can say a lot of things about me, but like, I, I it is like totally not my style. Like, that's just like not the way that I do things because, you yeah. I, I just don't, it's just not my style. Right. Yeah. So other people have told me. Um, basically the, you know, same thing that you're telling me and, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if it's like giving him the benefit of the doubt, but like, that was basically my, like my takeaway as well. And, um, you know, it, it, it's unfortunate because I mean, it's not like we were like. BFFs or anything, you know, but right, like, I definitely, right. you know, definitely thought, definitely thought we were cool. And, you know, um, it, you know, it, it's just not my, it's not my style to be like, I, like, why would I, why, why do I need to, why would I do any of that when like I talked to him about it on Thursday and then spent all day Friday, like yeah. working on it. <laughs> Yeah, because you would you would think that if there was an issue there, the way he tweeted about that, it would have been discussed the moment you said, "Hey, I have an ad, I would like to do it." And it's because the conversation in that case would have went different, right? It wouldn't have been, "How about 300? Like basically countering you and then saying because 100 for the match arena and yada yada yada. It would have been more so on principle and been like, "Well, actually, uh, I, we can't do it," you know, for whatever reason. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. And then at that time you would have had no choice, right? But the fact that up front, the initial conversation, it was more so about the money. And then y'all basically from your story agreed on it. 
uh, that's where it, it does seem a little fishy, you know, because you would think if it was, hey, I'm just not, I'm just anti gutex guys. I want everybody to know I'm anti gutex it, it seems like that would have been the initial conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, him not responding, I could totally see that. Uh, you could take that a couple different ways. Obviously, we've all had people not respond to us via text. You text people now and then, and, and they won't hit you. And if they're busy, especially, I remember back in the day going to Evo and seeing you, you would have like an assistant with you and a fucking team of entourage behind you with cameras and shit. There was no, I mean, you were just on the go. You know what I'm saying? So to not hear back from somebody initially, I honestly, if I was in the same boot, and this is not me, because a lot of people on Twitter like to use that meme, Dick Ryder and all this other shit. This is me just being completely neutral in the facts that I've been presented so far. You know what I'm saying? And in these facts, I would have took it the same way. I wouldn't have took it as somebody dissing me. I just would have took them being busy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you were at the event on top of that. So right. you would think yeah. that it wasn't like you just did your shit and then bounced because you were like, yeah, I got away with it. No, you did your shit because you believed in it. And you were around. You yeah, helped set up. I was up there it. all night. <laughs> yeah. You were there. So it was kind of, it is very odd. It is very odd. And honestly, just hearing your side of the story, like I said, I didn't know what you were going to say. Uh, you could have got on here and said, yeah, I got away with it, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have said anything, honestly. And, and I right, would have just and, been like, oh, shit. All right. You know, like, damn. But. Exactly. And, and a few people told me that, like, I did, you know, like, oh, yeah. like. Who cares, bro? Like, you know, you got you, you got the ad on there. Like, who cares about the, you know, who cares what he thinks? Um, but, you know, like, I don't, um, I, you know, like, that's just not the way that I roll, you know? Yeah. So I, um, you know, I thought about it and I'm like, well, I I don't feel, I mean, the whole situation is, is ugly. Um, so I just held up my end of the bargain and sent the hundred to the match arena and I sent him the 200. Okay. So you still sent it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now to your knowledge, has this been sent back to you or has this been accepted? Uh, so, you know, I, I looked, um, oh, duh. I'm using my phone as the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it's, I mean, the mat, it's definitely not sent back on the match arena. I, yeah. I don't know if he sent it back. Uh, I just looked, you know, I just, I mean, I got the screenshots too, you know, I'm happy to send you, you know, uh, the, you know, I just, I typed in his email, right? Like I went to his, went to his bio, went to his Twitter, yeah. then click the link of the bio, then go down to the bottom and, 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 uh, found his email. Yep. And then nothing came up. So then I just typed in Z Damascus and then his full name came up. Yeah. So that's where I sent it. Gotcha. So even despite all this, I still was like, well, you know, ultimately, I mean, not like any of the players like knew or cared or whatever, but it's like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, like a hundred of that was still going to go to the players and like, they didn't do anything wrong. Right. So, right. right. You know why should they why should they be punished right because this that wasn't something that any of them had anything to do with right so i'm like well i should just i should just pay what i what we had agreed upon you yeah. on thursday because i mean you know because my ad you know got got ran even though you know whatever it was only twice but you know that wasn't even something that like we had talked about right and yeah. it's like once it had started i'm just like oh man like I don't know if it's going to run. I don't know. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen, but it's yeah. like, you know, I'm just going, I was just going forward based on, you know, what we had talked about in person the day before. <laughs> yeah. What was the last thing that he said to you so far? Uh, was it that morning where he was upset with you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we had, I mean, this is why it's, you know, this is why it's so frustrating, right? Because it's like, it's not one of those things where, 
you know, we only handled it publicly or we only handled it privately. It's like, okay, well, we had a lot of back and forth and then, you know, we still, you know, we had a lot of back and forth in the DMs, but now, you know, it still has to be handled publicly. Yeah. Um, so last thing that he says, Saturday, 5.56 p.m. Uh, I mean, I basically tell him, look, I offered sponsorship money. I helped set up monitors and I'll, you know, whatever. I'll see in screenshots. Like, I don't care. I have nothing to hide. Like, I'm just telling it the way that I remember it. Right. Uh, but yeah, like I said, look, I offered sponsorship money. I helped set up monitors. I, I brought drinks. I ran home to get cables from art. I offered rides, et cetera. Not because anybody asked, but because I was just trying to help any way I can. Because yeah. I know these events are a huge pain in the ass. And you were so upset that you didn't get approval of the graphic. So you decided to take to Twitter. Real professional, bro. And I said, even after all that, I still offered help in the group chat because we, we were in a, a WhatsApp group, you yeah. know? Despite your <laughs> unprofessionalism. And I'm like, oh yeah, I got him. Oh, I, I hit him with the unprofessional. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, take that. I mean, because you know, like that's you know, that's what he what he said I was being, right? Yeah. So then he says, Yes, I get upset when things are put on the event I run without telling me. Let's stop at that anyway. Have a good day. Damn. Damn. It, it's frustrating that it that it comes to this because it, it's just like unnecessary drama, you know, but I felt I felt like I had no choice but to address it publicly, even though it's like not my preference to be like, you know, like fighting in public. Right. On some, right. He said she said she said type of bullshit, you know, like I don't you know, like I don't do that. That's not my style either. But right. it's like, you know, if you're going to just you know, make up a bunch, if you're, if you're just gonna make up a bunch of lies and leave out the, the most important part of the entire thing, in my opinion, which is us agreeing on the price the day before, then, you know, like, what am I supposed to do? Just be like, oh yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Twitter mob, like, oh, and you, oh, I'm so, I, I, I'm so, I'm so sneaky. Like, fuck <laughs> that. I'm so fucking sneaky. <laughs> That, that I went up to talk to you in person the day before to try to give you money because he, I mean, he was the one that told me, he's like, yeah, like we're coming out of pocket for this. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, shit, I get it. Trust me, I, you know, I get it. Yeah. You know, I even talked with uh, with Andy, City of Brass, because I didn't, you know, like I didn't realize that they were like also like joint partners on it too. Yeah. But I talked to him, you know, the following day, like Friday too, to make sure that he was in the loop specifically to avoid this type of situation because I've been around for so long where it's like you tell you know you talk to one guy but then like that message doesn't get communicated and and it's not you know I'm not like pointing fingers but that's just the way that FGC shit works yeah. you know like and you know like because I mean it it, it it just I don't know that's that's like the standard to me right like you can you know you have so many people coming together to make something happen that of course like not everything gets communicated to everybody on the team right so it's like my job as somebody who's been around for so long to try to avoid those situations by making sure that like you know that everything is on the up and up like i guess i guess what i really needed to do was be like oh send me a contract send me an invoice but i'm just like dude like it's fucking evo weekend the shit is tomorrow everybody's busy we agreed yesterday. Yeah. I'm good for the money. Like, I'm just going to go ahead with what we agreed upon. And that's why in in the DMs, like, he never says, oh, I never said $300 because he knows he did. Hmm. Yeah. And he can, he can, I, I personally think he is just like, he didn't realize there was going to be like all this blowback from what bots on Twitter, you know, like, Oh, motherfuckers are mad on the internet because I wanted to like contribute financially to, to his event. Like, wow. Like I'm such a fucking ass. I'm so, I'm such a, a sneaky, unprofessional asshole. You know what I mean? Like, how dare me? How dare, how dare you goop text? How dare you try to give away a book? 
I saw some responses. You know, I'm always on Twitter and, and social media for this channel and whatnot. And I saw some responses from what he said, immediately, immediately believing, obviously, what he said. Um, and then I even had some people tag me saying, hey, you need to stop supporting Gutex. And I think they said that because of the way I usually talk highly of you and Mike and how you guys inspired me coming up and how you helped me coming up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Thank you. And, and, and uh, no, it's, it's real talk, you know? And um, what I've always said, though, is like, when I, you know, when I was speaking to you earlier, I was like, you know, I think I'm built purposely, like my life experiences to do this for the FGC and, and maybe beyond one day, you know, just because of my personal experiences, I've had cancel culture on me. There's times I have fucked up, like I fucked up, you know what I'm saying? And there's times I had to own up to that and learn and grow. And there's other times that people just straight up dogpiled on me, lying their fucking ass off in the community. And people believe them because who they were or, you know, because of their story or whatever, like straight dog shit lies, like straight up. And I always just, I always just step back. I never get involved. You're not, anytime recently, you are not going to see me involved in a Twitter argument because I will not argue on social media. You're not going to win. It's pointless. Uh, so I, I back up. If you want to talk about me, that's not my business. I'm out of it. You know what I'm saying? So because I've had that on me and because I've experienced that in the FGC, it helps me learn and helps me grow that there is always two sides of the story. Sometimes you're guilty, sometimes you're not. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the most highly respected person or loved or adored could be absolutely full of shit or could make a mistake. Uh, you, you never know. You literally, and I'm so tired of the Twitter mentality that if some person says it or if it's a rumor or whatever, it's ever, it's automatically fact. You know, it's automatically fact without doing any fucking research. It is just fact. Hey, let's all light our pitchforks and let's burn the motherfucker down because it is a fact, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck? When did this start? You know, it's been around for a while, but I, it just literally makes me sick to my stomach. And anybody that I talk about on the channel or that I interview it's not necessarily, it doesn't come from a place like, hey, I'm pro this person. It comes from a place that I am pro freedom of speech and I am pro your side of the story. You know what I'm saying? I would interview Damascus tomorrow if he wanted to, you know? But it is no lie from the beginning. I've always been like, who didn't love Excellent Adventures? You know what I'm saying? Who didn't grow up in the FGC on Excellent Adventures and Mike Ross and Gutex? You guys had so much impact. You guys changed so much shit for everybody uh, in the FGC. That's why, you know, you. I think a lot of times people don't realize, like, if they'll catch these chains and threads of, of, like, people dogpiling on Twitter, and they almost take that as Bible uh, when, you, when they're judging certain individuals. But if you go to YouTube, you'll see, like, all these comments that love that same individual. So it's almost like two different platforms, two different trains of thought almost. It's kind of weird. Um, and as much as the FTC lives on Twitter, I just, I, I don't get it. It's like, we all have YouTube and we all have Instagram. And it's like, I don't understand we, why we can't use our brains more to figure out that not everybody hates everybody. You know, there are different perspectives out there and there is life outside of the FTC. Let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Um, Cause some people might be wondering as well, uh, the way you are, like, well, I think the most Gutex we get nowadays, and this might be part of it too, is because before the only Gutex we, that I knew of, and that a lot of people knew of was, uh, you know, cross counter, right? Every time we saw Gutex, it was doing something with Mike. Uh, it was doing excellent adventures. It was doing an interview, hosting a tournament, bar fights. You know, it was basically Gutex, the content creator. Everybody, I hadn't seen anybody that had a problem with that Gutex, right? We loved Gutex and Mike Ross. You know, you guys were like the faces of the FGC for the most part, as far as I'm concerned, and a lot of people coming up in the FGC, you know? Um, so <laughs> that's the Gutex that a lot of us, you know, came up with. Uh, in light of recent events, it almost seemed like, uh, you know, when the world stopped, you know, with COVID, and then around that same time, maybe even like a little before, uh, Excellent Adventures kind of took a break or stopped, if you will. Um, and then y'all kind of almost seemed to be doing your own things. And as your content stopped, like 
And I bring it back to that because it's almost like that Gutex that we come to know and love kind of took a pause, you know, to where it's like, hey guys, I'm trying to figure shit out right now, you know? And then the other Gutex on Twitter uh, came alive almost, but it also happened to happen when COVID hit. And when the world stopped during COVID, we were all just trapped in the houses and we were all like trying to figure out, are we about to die? You know, we were all like, what the fuck is really going on in life? Hell, still we're like, now we got monkeypox. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell, we're still there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's literally still there. But anyway, I say all that to say this is, the way you're so vocal on Twitter, it's almost like that now is the Gutex that everybody is, is getting now, is they're getting more of the opinionated political uh, worldly views, Gutex, you know what I'm saying? Rather than the content creator of the FTC, Gutex. Do you think that, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, have you always been this way? Because I've, like I said, I, I haven't known you like, like Mike has known you or, or people growing up with you and whatnot on that personal tip. I've known you coming into the FTC as content creator Gutex. And when I got to work with you 2018 in bar fights, it was content creator Gutex, you know, and I, and you were such a cool guy and you took care of me and, and um, it, it was just an amazing experience for me, you know. Uh, were you, the, your point of views is whatnot, I guess what I'm asking is, have you always been like that? Like, have you always been very outspoken before Twitter was a thing? Or do you think it's more so in the light of recent events, the way things have unfolded uh, with cross counter and now with COVID and all that, that just kind of makes Gutex more outspoken than ever? Well, number one, like, I come from a family where like, you know, we'll talk about whatever at the dinner table, but, and it's not about like, agreeing or disagreeing is just about like talking about what you know all kinds of things right but you know my but but it's it's never like a like a, oh i fucking hate you you know like it, it's really not that it, it i it, it's just not that's not i guess that's not like the kind of family that i have right so i don't know maybe i forget that like not everybody, you know, sees the world that way or can, I don't know, think about things that way, I guess. Um, you know, I don't really feel, I guess, I, I don't know. I think I I think I just try to be the same person all the time, and when it's very clear to me to me in my like in my opinion, which is you know based on my world based on my experiences in life, you know. But like yeah. when shit is not right, like you know, it's not going to get any better if you know if I if I'm not trying to do something about it, you know. Not to say that like I. Not to say that w the way I see things or whatever, I'm more important than anybody else. It's not like that. It's just like, well, how can I expect, if something's wrong, how can I expect anything to get better unless I try to like, try to like make it, try to like make it better somehow. And like, that's not to say that, I don't know, like my, I, I, I don't know, my, my approach, my approach is flawed. Maybe my approach is like totally wrong. Maybe I should just shut the fuck up and just push buttons. I don't know, maybe that's the way that it should be. But I also know that I know I'm not the only one. I, I know I'm not because people tell me, even if they tell me in private, they tell me that they're right there with me. But ultimately, man, um, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, check these buttons, man, and get your perspective. Hey, uh, thanks. Because I feel yeah, like thanks. I really feel like the FTC needed to hear a lot of what you had to say. Now, some people are going to hear you and still disagree. Uh, some people might that's, get mad at me fine. for giving you the chance to speak. You know what I'm saying? But either way, it's How something that has to be you? done. <laughs> 
you know ultimately like i said if i if i'm gonna do this channel if i'm gonna do this i have to do this i can't pussy out for lack of a better terms you know what i'm saying i cannot even though like i said some people are gonna disagree with this i don't care like i have to get these perspectives out and in both sides of the story and do people justice so i appreciate it Thank man you. Uh, Thank you. The no, ebook. Hey, thanks for taking the time. No problem, man. The ebook is out. Uh, I assume you're trying to tidy that up. Um, and it is up to you as an adult to choose if you would like to get this free book or not. All right. That's the way this shit works. We are all adults. And like we say all the time on this channel, it is okay to agree to disagree. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. Um, if there was any questions you think I failed to ask or anything like that, because who knows, we might get to interview Gutex in another two years. It seems like that's going to be the new fashion, right? Every two years, we'll interview this man to see where he's at. You know what I'm saying? So, we, okay, let's not let, let's not make it. You know, let, let, let's not let it be so long. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll yeah, maybe I'll see you at a at an in person event sometime. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I'm I'm hoping to get like this year. I only wanted to do one. Um, and that's hopefully Defend the North next year a lot more. But of course, we'll see the times and days that we live in now. Nobody knows what the hell is going to happen around the corner. But that is the plan for next year is to get way more mobile. Um, nice. So I appreciate it, man. Have a good night uh, right. there in Vegas. We will talk to you soon. Once right. again, thank you for checking these buttons with us today, sir. We'll see thank you soon. You. Peace. All right, later. Bye, guys. Thanks. There it is, ladies and gents. Definitely let me know how you're feeling, man. That... First of all, that interview went a lot longer than I thought it was, um, but I have to admit, you know, like going back on this, initially I said I wanted to unpack and check these buttons, but I wanted to wait. Why? Because like I said in the video, I feel like Twitter is just too quick to cancel people and to dogpile without having all the facts. Like at what point did we get that way uh, as a community, as individuals, as people, you know what I'm saying? To where we were like, we heard one person say, hey, this guy's an asshole. And everybody goes, oh, really? Okay, well, he's an asshole. Everybody, come on. We all, we're all agreeing that this guy's an asshole. But I'm like in the back, like, wait, 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 wait. Why? Does nobody care about the facts? Does nobody care about the other side of the story? Like, maybe you saw him be an asshole last year, two years ago. Maybe you saw him be an asshole two months ago. But is he still an asshole? And if he is, why? But it's almost like we don't care at all about the why nowadays like we really don't you know what i'm saying and I, it's just sad because to to hate somebody to just totally disregard a person's existence and be like no they're forever canceled and they're forever a piece of shit shouldn't be so easy right am i the only one let me know if you think i'm tripping down below but it shouldn't be second nature because it seems like nowadays with social media it is and like i said though i speak from experience because i've seen people do this to me I've seen the people do this to others and none of it feels good. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing you can do, do, the only thing you can do at the end of the day is keep it pushing and be you. You know, spread the joy, spread the love and do you a hundred percent. What I mean by that is life. Your life is the evidence. So when it's all said and done, it's still up to you. I'm not sitting here asking y'all to agree with Gutex and being like, he's 100% right. Everybody go get that book. No, I'm here to present the point of view. You know what I'm saying? I see it one way, he sees it one way. Damascus might see it another, y'all might see it another. But at the end of the day, now you have that side of the story. Now you have that, now you have that perspective and you can check them buttons. So there it is one more again. Definitely let me know how you guys are feeling. Thank you for the massive love and the reality of helping this channel grow. Like, honestly, it, it means the world that we could just provide, you know, content like this for the FGC all around. So love you guys forever. We will see you soon. If not tomorrow, definitely the next day. Peace. Blah, blah, blah. Subscribe. I'm just going to leave it up for a while. So if anybody wants yeah. to check out the, the book Damascus didn't want you to read. <laughs> You can read it for free at gutex.com.